Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This time we are going to take a look at a famous amplifier, the Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier. We're going to talk about its name, the Dual Rectifier. What exactly does that mean? Why is it called that? What feature does it add? And how does it affect the performance of the amp? So if you've ever been curious about what that means, go ahead and stay tuned. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So to get things started, this is the back of a Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier. Now, there are a lot of different model names of Mesa, and I think the dual rectifier connotation can apply to a number of different models of amp. And while I have owned a Mesa in the past, and I know some about them, I'm not an expert, so I'm happy to be corrected, but I believe this would be your typical uh, dual rectifier amp model. And I just want to highlight, looking at the back here, I think this helps us see. You can see over here, you've got two tubes here that are a little bit taller than the rest, these are called 5U4GBs, so these are rectifier tubes. There are two of them. Uh, so when it talks about being a dual rectifier, that's the first thing that you can see, is that you have uh, the ability to use two rectifier tubes, which is different than most two rectifier amps only have a single tube rectifier. So having two of them is probably the first reason why it's called a dual rectifier. I think maybe the second reason is if you look at these switches right here, uh, each of these four channels has, it looks like a switch where it says recto tracking, and then on the bottom it says diode. Now, I, basically, I believe what this means is this amp has the ability to switch between tube and solid state rectification to give you a little bit of a difference in feel. So, um, the biggest thing to understand there is that rectification is a part of the power supply that is sending the voltage uh, from the power transformer into the rest of the tubes. So your audio signal is never actually going through the rectifier tube or the rectifier diodes if it's solid state. It's just the, the power supply voltage is being rectified through these devices. So that's kind of the first thing to know is I know a lot of people get really excited about tube amps for the sound that they impart on your audio signal. but uh, if that is one thing you're excited about, having a tube rectifier versus a solid state rectifier, again, your tone, your, your signal path, your audio signal is never actually passing through this tube. Uh, but what is happening is it's a little bit deeper of a, of a thought there. So you have, with a tube rectifier, um, and compared to a solid state rectifier, there are a few key differences, okay? so. Tube rectifiers have an internal resistance and an internal impedance. So when the signal, the power voltage travels through the tube, it's actually going to be loaded down somewhat. And all tube rectifiers have a voltage drop, meaning they're not 100% efficient. So if you put in 400 volts of DC, or, or, or let's say you put in, you're, you're putting an AC, you, you put in, let's say you put in 400 volts of AC into the rectifier tube, it's going to rectify it out to maybe 500 volts DC. Well, the tube rectifier is going to drop that number, uh, and the different tube rectifiers that you choose are more or less efficient. Um, whereas, uh, you know, if, you, if, if you've got a solid state rectifier, it's going to be more like 90 some percent efficient. Uh, so it's, it's quite a bit closer to kind of a, a quote unquote perfect rectification. So what that means for when you're playing practically is when you turn the volume on the amp up really loud, and you uh, are, are playing really heavy, and really hard, the, if there is going to be some resistance and impedance there onto the supply of voltage, it's going to cause some sag, which is basically a little bit of a softer, spongier feel under the pick attack. So this is not something that you're necessarily going to change the audio signal, but it is going to change the feel of the amp. So a solid state rectifier is typically described as being more immediate, more firm, more fast, Whereas the tube rectifier has a little bit of sag, a little bit of uh, compre not necessarily compression on the audio signal, but like kind of a squishier feel, where when you pick your note, it doesn't happen quite as quickly. There's a little bit of a maybe a delay or a uh, just kind of a squish before the note fully blooms. So those are the primary differences between the two. But let's take it a, even a step further, and let's take a look at the schematic, and let's talk technically about what's happening here. Okay. So this is a schematic for a Mesa dual rectifier, and this is the power supply. So you can see over here on the left, we've got the primary. So this is a, it says 117 volts AC. This is coming from the wall when you plug in your power cord. It goes through a fuse, and it goes through a switch, 
Now, um, it interesting looks like it goes through another switch, spongy and bold, which actually looks to be changing the input voltage on the primary side of the power supply. So I, I, if, I would guess if you go up to the top, you're getting the full voltage, whereas if you go down, you're actually reducing the voltage because, so, so they, these power transformers must be fairly custom. That's kind of a feature you don't see very frequently. So then you have your 120 volts of alternating current. Okay, this is an example of an audio form. It looks a little bit choppy, but you can see basically you've got this center line in the middle, and then it goes up and down, up and down. It's alternating. And how um, high it goes away from the center line, that's the how loud or amplitude it is. And then the, the how quickly these things spike up and down is the frequency. So a higher pitched frequency is going to have more peaks and valleys, whereas a lower pitch is going to spread them out further apart. So that's what you have coming from your wall. You have 120 volts of alternating current. So this AC is going to run through the power transformer, and it is going to be uh, stepped up. So through the winding ratio of the power transformer, it's basically like a multiplier. So if you have 120 volts in, it might send out some multiplication factor of that. So it might be uh, three or 400 volts of alternating current that are stepping out, especially for a high voltage, high power amp like this. So that high voltage is alternating current. It's going to come out of, right here it says 350 volts AC. That's coming out of this line and this line. So this high voltage AC needs to be rectified. Rectified means converted or transformed into direct current. Now direct current looks very different than AC because it does not peak or valley. It is more of just like a flat line. Perfect DC is, you can see the, the difference right here. Uh, the, the alternating current goes up and down. The, the direct current just stays totally flat line. And that's what you want uh, when you're supplying the, the voltage to these tubes. So uh, the basic idea here is you've got this rectifier select switch. So you can either run into it has two of these 5U4 rectifier tubes, or it's got t a bunch of these solid state diodes. So you can basically choose how you want to send it, and then whichever path it takes, either up through here and here, it's going to come out right here, or if it goes through the tubes, it's going to come out of pin 8 and collect up on here. So you've got two 5U4 rectifier tubes running in parallel, you know, one path right here, another path right here. Um, both of these tubes are in line, both are running in parallel with one another. And the reason why you do that is because this amp is running, I believe, four 606s or EL34s. So it's a very, very high current draw. Those tubes are requiring a tremendous amount of current to flow through them. And so a single rectifier tube is probably going to tap out. It's not going to be able to supply the super high current rating required by these tubes. You, know, you could be requiring you know, three, four, five hundred milliamps of current just to the power section of four of those tubes. And so a single rectifier is probably not going to be able to do it. So use two rectifier tubes in parallel like this to kind of take the load off of one another and so that it's shared a little bit more evenly across uh, the two tubes. So, you know, I, I can see with a hundred watt amp how you would maybe need two of these. But, um, you know, the thing that I would maybe say that's a little bit weird or a little misleading and when you go to a triple rectifier, um, you know, I, maybe that refers to adding a third tube if you're going to go up to like 150 watts. So you're going to have six output tubes. I think maybe a, a triple rectifier might do that. But even which way, you still probably only have two selections, right? You don't have a third choice for a triple rectifier. You either still have the solid state diodes or you have the three tubes in parallel. So. Um, Overall, though, I would say this, and, and what I would say is that the, having this choice of the ability to use solid state diodes or two rectifier is an interesting one, and it's one that will have an effect on the feel of the amplifier. However, I would say that it's a little bit of a marketing ploy, in my opinion. Um, it's, it's a subtle detail, and I would even go so far to say that it, unless you're running the amp at pretty high volumes, you know, the, the two, the purpose of the two rectifier to provide some of that sag is maybe not going to be apparent until you really start to push the amp, right? If you're running the amp at a quarter volume, you're really not going to be feeling 
or seeing that sag in the same way as if you run it flat out. So, um, and, and, then, and then lastly, you know, it's interesting because these amps, they're known, you know, when you think dual rectifier, you think a high gain, modern, kind of new metal type tone, but in reality, that is much more a product of the preamp. If you go up and look at this preamp circuit, this, this is where all that tone shaping is happening. And it's really not, I mean, the rectifier is, is such a small, I mean, I mean you, could, you could really you know, have a dual rectification. You could do that in like a deluxe reverb if you want, or in a twin reverb probably if you want a higher powered amp, right? So it's, it's interesting because the name dual rectifier really isn't that terribly linked with the sound of the amp. It's just kind of an interesting marketing term that the amp has become so famous and so it's known for that, when in reality, in my opinion, it is a minor contribution to the overall tone. And really, it's not the tone, it's really more just the feel under the pick. The sound of the amp isn't really gonna be changing that much from tube to solid state rectification. Um, so all of that, I hope that you found that interesting and, and, you know, if you're interested in amp design, these are interesting things to play around with. Um, but certainly interesting to me how when you have an amp like this that becomes very famous for this name of dual rectifier, right, it, it's kind of becomes this myth or this legend that maybe a lot of most, I bet 99% of the owners of dual rectifiers in the, in the last 30 years really don't know anything about this. Um, it's just very interesting how that all has played out over the course of history. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts or comments down below, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.